from Squallywood, it's the Dan and Ron Show! Hello, I'm Dan. And I'm Ron. We are the Dan, Dan and, and Ron, Ron Show. Show. Dan, I want to increase my edge angle. Okay, why? Because it's the cool thing to do. Okay. Where in the turn do you want to do this increased cool edge angle? After the fall line. Huh. What do you think that will do to the turn shape? Make it look like a fish hook. Okay, and you think that's cool? Maybe for fishing, but in snow skiing, we usually try for rounded turns. Hmm. Could you begin to increase your edge angle sooner in the turn? I could begin in the fall line. Okay, how are you going to do that? I could increase my body angulation sooner. Nice A word. But what about angulation would you emphasize here? I would try to increase my upper lower body separation. With the increased angulation, will you be standing equally on both skis? No, I would be balancing against the outside ski. Sounds like that could be enough to give it a try. That was Dan and my attempt at presenting a guided discovery scenario. Guided discovery is a teaching style where the teacher develops a series of logically designed questions or tasks. In this scenario, we use questions. The student and teacher then work through the questions in sequence. Each question will then lead to the next question. Eventually, the student will be guided through this Q&A to discover the predetermined answer. Finally, the teacher acknowledges when the correct concept or answer is discovered. Guided discovery is process oriented and very student centered. Yep, it's all about me. <laughs> well, yeah, it is very student centered. Dan, the teacher, laid out specific questions. This led or guided Ron, the student, toward the desired outcome. The questions only had one answer. No Fifty Shades of Grey here. Nor did Dan, the teacher, give me, the student, the answer. He waited and listened. The mechanism that makes guided discovery such a great learning strategy is that the student is not spoon-fed. The student is an active participant in the learning process, and the best part is that the student definitely owns what has been learned or discovered. Students are involved in the, the process of learning, so they will need to elicit higher levels of thinking. Bringing this back to Fitz and Posner's stages of motor learning, this would be mostly used in the cognitive stage and maybe a little in the associative stage. Since improvement steps in motor learning are not instantaneous, guided discovery may be most effective in longer term coaching or teaching applications. You really need time to prepare your questions so you get the answers you want. Hopefully we've shown that guided discovery is not just asking questions, and it's definitely not a fishing expedition. Yeah, no fish hooks here, but a goal-directed, systematic, linear, and sequential queries that challenge the student's cognitive processes. Okay, what do we say at the end of the show? Was that a goal-directed question with one answer? Yep, a hockey goal. Ha, <laughs> good one. Keep your stick on the ice, and thanks for joining us on the Dan and Ron Show. Dan and Ron Show. I wonder if I throw the TP too early in there. You are my discovery.